Hello. Today we are going to be talking about a little pistol that I got for my wife, our anniversary, called the Taurus G2C. I believe it's the same as what they called the Millennium. Regardless, it's a subcompact, 12 rounds, double stack. Let's go ahead. I've taken the magazine out. Let's go ahead and make sure it's clear. Everything's clear. Put the magazine back in. Let's get started. Now, one thing that attracted me to this was the price. Um, you can have them in this color for around 250 bucks. Maybe even find it a little bit cheaper. The all black ones were around 210, 220. Very affordable firearm. Many people say, well, that's because it's a Taurus, it's a piece of junk, etc., etc. In my mind, in my experience, Taurus is every bit as good as Ruger. Um, it was very comparable to the EC9S, which is just an LC9S with fixed sights. Striker fired, very nice gun. My wife did have one of these. It was stolen not that, eh, not quite a year ago. And, um, since she still had an LC9, we hadn't replaced it. But for her anniversary, I decided to replace it. So, here you go. We took her and let her look at a few firearms, and she decided this was one she liked. She picked this over the EC9S because she liked the slightly larger, wider grip. She felt that it gave her a more firm hold on the firearm. Things that I like about it, besides the price, very, very nice stippling. This almost feels like sandpaper. Very, very nice. Um, very nice. You see in the front, in the back. Very nice stippling. Nice finger hold here. I really like that. It gives you a nice, precise place to put your finger when you're practicing proper um, trigger control. When you're keeping your finger off the trigger, that nice little spot there. I, I wish that it was stippled, and uh, we may decide to go ahead and stipple this, but still a nice place. Has a little Picatinny rail here, so you could put an accessory such as a light or a laser. Um, adjustable sights for elevation and windage. Nice feature for an economical firearm. Um, again, double stack, holds 12 rounds. I've got fairly large hands. I mean, th this this firearm is the size of a Glock 26, or maybe a little bit larger. I do not have small hands. Can cover the whole thing. But it doesn't fit me too bad. It fits my wife much better. It does not fit me too bad. Fairly comfortable. Um, just give, I mean, you feel like you've just got all the grip in the world. With that, with that nice stippled finish. Um, personally, not a big fan of the color, but again, my wife's gun, not mine. So, but but it's a nice, nice looking firearm. Um, nice anodized uh, or maybe even Cerakote type finish. Has a loaded chamber indicator right here. Um, let's go into it a little bit more. Again, clear. Trigger. Um, it's a strike fired firearm. A bit of, quite a bit of take up. Fairly light, fairly crisp pull. Um, especially for a striker fired gun. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, this is a nice thing. This this firearm is fired basically single action. But once that's done. Say you get a light strike. It has. Now it's much heavier. Just as long, much heavier. It has second strike capability. That's nice. Cock it again. Back to the lighter pull. 
Not bad. Not bad. Quite a bit of take up. That's part of the safety features of it, being a striker fired, etc. But not bad. Not bad. Um, low profile sights, even though they are fully adjustable. Um, if this was my personal firearm, I would black out these white dots. But my wife likes those, and we're going to keep them the way they are. Uh, does have a safety. Not all striker fire firearm, fired firearms do. Does have a safety. Nice and thumb operable. It is not ambidextrous. Um, does not look like it has provisions to be so. But it doesn't matter. We're both right-handed. And like I said in some of my other, you can learn to move your thumb over to the other side or to flick it with your finger if you are a lefty. But there are other firearms <coughs> with ambidextrous safeties that uh, that work as, as well. So maybe this isn't the gun for you if, you, if you're a southpaw. But for us, this will work just fine. Um, not a lot larger in profile than the LC9 or the EC9S, but, but a little bit, a little bit thicker because it's a double stack. Um, again, though, holds 12 rounds, comes with two magazines, both like this with that nice pinky catch on them. Um, I do not believe they make a flush fit, but, but they may. Uh, if they do, that might, if you have fatter fingers, that would be a little smaller, a little harder to grab. Um, but overall, very, very impressed. Um, never had a lick of problems with Tauruses. Now, I've, I've personally only had Taurus revolvers. I've had very good luck with them. But I've had uh, several friends that have had different, from 24-7s to Millenniums to Slims, etc. I never had a lick of problem with them. I know there are some people out there that think Taurus is junk. In my experience, that's just not true. Again, your mileage may vary, but uh, I don't have a problem one bit comparing this to the LC9, the EC9S, etc. This is right on par as far as quality and price. Um, it is a double stack. It will be. It would be a fairly easy to conceal gun, not a pocket gun by any stretch of the imagination. Certainly not as small as uh, as my Kimber Micro Nine, but it's also not a a five to eight hundred dollar firearm either. Um, would would fit fairly well in a medium to large purse. Fit easy easily in a glove box, a small compartment in your car. Would not be bad for inside the waistband carry. But for the main purpose of what this is going to be for is to keep in the house for personal protection. This thing is going to be perfect. We're going to have to take it to the range soon and maybe I'll take you guys along. Uh, but this is just my initial reactions to this firearm. I'm very, very impressed. So far, it appears to have a full length guide rod, which I like. Uh, polymer framed. I don't have a problem with polymer frame. You know from my other videos that I'm not extremely fond of striker fired firearms, um, mainly because I grew up with hammer fired. But that's not a negative to me, it's just not something I prefer. This isn't for me. So it doesn't really matter. Um, for my wife, I think this is a very nice size, comfortable. Um, it'll have quite a bit of weight to it once the, not, not overly heavy, but it'll have a good amount of weight to it once the magazine's fully loaded. I really, really think this is going to be an excellent firearm. So far, I'm very impressed. I was impressed with the, with the sights, with the rail. Um, loaded chamber indicator is a nice feature for someone who's not extremely familiar with firearms. <laughs> the fact that it also has a safety and not just the Glock, Glock type, type trigger safety. One thing I do not like is that it does have that Glock type, type trigger safety, which is fine. 
but it does not go flush with the trigger. So when you pull the trigger back, it doesn't fully retract. So you're pulling on that button, not necessarily on the trigger itself. Over a period of time, that may make for a sore finger. Um, I haven't looked to see if Apex or someone like that makes a slightly better trigger that fully retracts. But if you see here, when that push, that's all it goes. It's still retracted. It's still outside. So, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to like that. But again, it's not mine. It doesn't seem to bother my wife. That's fine. Just something that I, it, w it certainly wouldn't be a deal breaker for me. But it's something that I don't like that much. I prefer a trigger that goes to flush. And that's why I like the Smith & Wessons that have the jointed trigger instead of the button. And when the jointed piece is retracted, it becomes a one like a one-piece trigger, and you're good to go. But again, that's just a personal preference. It doesn't detract from the quality. Um, the trigger is plastic, uh, so maybe an Apex upgrade will be uh, in line later on. But this is not something that's going to be fired thousands of rounds at the range, etc. This is something my wife's going to keep for personal protection. This is something we're going to take out to the range from time to time. And for those purposes, this is just going to fit the bill great. If you like the flat dark earth, um, again, around 250 bucks. Way to go. If you want the black one, a little less. They even make a turquoise. Um, I think a pink etc etc the color phases are slightly more expensive than the all black i would prefer the all black but again not mine um plenty of room in the trigger guard nice feel nice heft uh similar to the smith and wesson shield that i had and similar also to the uh the m p 2.0 Compact that I had for a short period of time. Now that was more Glock 19 sized. I believe it held 14 rounds, slightly longer barrel. Not the standard m p Compact, the 2.0 m p Compact. The standard m p Compact was like this. The 2.0 Compact, slightly larger firearm. Closer to the Glock 19, this is closer to the Glock 26. You say, well this guy doesn't like Glocks, why does he keep comparing? Because that's what's out there, and that's what's really common, and that's what people what people know. Not everybody and their brother has a Taurus G2. Lots of people have Glocks and familiar with them. So if you can compare it to those size sizes, to those firearms, it clicks. So uh, there's my take on it. Um, nice looking gun, nice feeling gun. Um, We'll have to check the performance, but I think we're going to be very, very pleased with this firearm. Again, I've never had any trouble with Taurus. Um, I know there's some people out there that have, but there's plenty of people out there that have had problems with Kimber, Sig, H&K, etc., etc. If you look hard enough, you're going to find bad reviews on every brand of firearm out there, and you're going to find great reviews on every brand of firearm out there. You're going to find somebody that loves the old Jenningses, as shivers go down the spine of most of the people watching this. You're going to find people that absolutely love high points. I am fairly fond of them. People think I'm nuts because of it, but I've never had anything bad to say about a high point, and I've owned three. Um, I personally still own two of them. Well, why did you get rid of the other one? Because I was moving. I had to transport it several states away with different gun laws in order to store it, and it was easier for me to sell the firearm and keep the money than it was to transport the firearm. So I decided that I would transport, that I would sell the firearm. It was going to be stored with my parents for a period of time out of state, and I didn't want any legal ramifications. So I sold the gun, pocketed the money, Later bought a replacement firearm. What did I replace it with? A High Point 45 that had been a High Point 380. I replaced it with a High Point 45 that I still have to this day because I was so impressed with 380. So I am someone that likes the High Points. Um, 
you're going to find good and bad on those. Good and bad on Taurus. For the most part, in my opinion, this class of firearm, these Tauruses, they're made to be similar to the Smith & Wesson m and series. Um, the, the, the looks, the size, very close. Um, tend to be slightly lighter. Are they as well built as the Smith & Wessons? In my opinion, I don't think so. But there's quite a bit of price differential. So I don't think they skimped. I think they just made a more affordable firearm. Is it something I would choose for local Ipsic mashes, things like that? Only time will tell. Probably not. But if that's what I could afford, certainly. Um, do I see one of these in my future? Time will tell after, after I fire it. I've got my eyes on a canic right now. But, nice serrations. I like the kind of fluting of the slide here. I think it looks sharp. I like the nice low profile adjustable sights, like I've said. I mean, it seems to be a really good solid firearm. Ergonomics are very good. I'm pretty impressed. So, till I take it to the range, we'll see you next time. God bless you. Remember, Christ is King. We'll talk to you later.